Welcome to Pateo Television. My name is Johan Oldenkamp. And in this 41st episode of Pateo TV, we will talk about the rhythm in the prime numbers. Seven years ago, I discovered this rhythm and I made a video about this together with a friend of mine. And this video is still available on YouTube. Simply click on this code and you will find it. But I noticed that not everybody really understands or even appreciates this rhythm. And especially people who have a dominant left hemisphere, uh, they don't like it too much. At least that is my conclusion. But we should remember that left is not always right. So in this video, I'll try again to explain it as good as possible so that hopefully more people might start to appreciate the rhythm in the prime numbers. I switch off my camera now. Numbers. When I talk about numbers in this video, I talk about round numbers or natural numbers or integers. And these are those natural numbers. And I use the number, uh, sorry, the letter A, the letter N for it. The N of natural numbers. And we forget about all fractional numbers. They are not important for this video. The next thing we define are composite numbers. And what is a composite number? Well, any composite number C is a multiplication, multiplication of two round numbers. For instance, number 10. Number 10 is a multiplication of 2 times 5. So this is simply the formula for any composite number, where the n has to be higher than 1. And now, since we have defined composite numbers, we can easily define a prime number, because a prime number is simply any number that is not a composite number. So prime numbers are the primary numbers, and all the other numbers are secondary numbers. That is the main distinction. Here you see the prime numbers encircled with a green line. And the question here is, do these prime numbers appear randomly in the array of all natural numbers? Or is there indeed, as I claim, a rhythm? In order to explain that rhythm, we must understand that we cannot define odd numbers in a positive way. We can define even numbers in a positive way because even numbers, any even number E, is simply two times an integer. That's all. But we cannot find a similar positive formula for odd numbers. All we can do is define odd numbers by stating what an odd number is not. Any odd number O is not equal to an even number. That's all. These numbers are very, very important, very specific uh, in order to understand the rhythm. Most people say that the one is not a prime number, but if one is not a primary number, then the conclusion is that one must be a secondary number. And that doesn't make any sense at all. So how do we treat the one? And in my research, the two and the three are far, far more important than just a prime number. They are not an ordinary prime number. They are extraordinary prime numbers, and I call them cosmic harmony numbers. And also the one is extraordinary. So they are not ordinary primes, and therefore they are not included in this explanation of the prime rhythm. They don't play any role at all in the prime rhythm. And it has also everything to do with the perfect number six. And why is six perfect? Well, six is the addition of one, two, and three, these first three numbers, but also the multiplication of one, two, and three. And that's why we call six the perfect number. Here you see the about first thousand primes. And yeah, I start with one, two, three, but there is, of course, debate about it. We simply ignore one, two, and three. We focus on all the others. And the question here is, 
is there a rhythm? Can you see the rhythm? Well, I found a rhythm, but it's not clear, not easy to see it here. Let us first look at binary numbers because there's a rhythm there too. And what are binary numbers? Well, you see here on the left side, the decimal numbers that we normally use, but our computers work with binary numbers. And the position on the most right-hand side, the first position, that is the value of two to the power zero. And that can either be a zero, which is off, or a one, which is on. And the position next to that is two to the power one. And the position next to that is two to the power two, and so on. So we use, we re reach here from right to left, which is a little bit strange. Um, and more easy to explain it here is, that's why I put it from left to right. So now the first column here are the values of two to the power zero, which is a one. And the second column are the values of two to the power two, uh, to the power one, sorry, it's a two. And then the third column is two to the power two, which is a four, and so on. And now we can see the rhythm because zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this is simply the next integer in the line going down until infinity. And then the rhythm in the first column is simply off, on, off, on, off, on. And the length of this is the same as the value of the column at the top. So this is two to the power zero, which is a one. So the length of the rhythm is a one, two. One off, one on, one off, one, two button on. Then the next column, the value is two, yeah, two to the power one, which is two. So it's two off, two on, two off, two on, two off, and so on. The third column is two to the power two, which is four. So it's four off, four on, four off, four on. And then the fourth column, two to the power three, eight, eight off, eight on, and so on. Then 16 off, 16 on, 33 off, 33 on, and so on. This is the rhythm that we can find in the binary numbers. And the rhythm that we find in the prime numbers is very much like this. So if you don't like the rhythm in the prime numbers, then you should be also telling me that you don't like this rhythm. And of course, everybody likes this rhythm because this is a beautiful rhythm. Yeah, it's simply two to the power n off, and then followed by that same number n, two to the power n, and then on for each column. With this formula, we can find any prime number. And it goes as follows. If the square root of six times n, the integer, plus one equals that value, that calculation, but then the integer of that value, meaning if it is not without a fraction. So if the square root is fractionless, then we have found a P, which is a prime number, then we have found a prime number, unless it is dividable by a prime number. That's what this formula says. So let's see how this formula works. Yeah, here we have the values of N. When we have N is one, we get as a result the square root of seven, and that is not fractionless. And the same is true for the square root of 13 and 19. But when n is four, then we get four times six is 24 plus one is 25, and the square root of 25 is a five. And that's fractionless. So this is a round number, meaning that five is the first integer, uh, the first prime number. And then the formula goes on, and the next one we find at the position eight. Six times eight is 48 plus one is 949. And the square root of 49 is a seven. And then the formula continues, and then it goes to 20. Yeah, six times 20 is 120 plus one is 121. The square root of 121 is 11. Yeah, and similar to 13 with position 28. And there's much more to say about this. Now, I now don't do every next number. I skip a few. Yeah, here we see primes again, 17, 19, 23. But now we reach to 104. Yeah, if we 
do six times 104, we get 624, plus one is 625. And if we take the square root of that, we get 25. So it agrees with the second line here, but now the unless becomes true, because this 25 is dividable by a prime, which is five. So then it is no longer a prime. This is how it works. And yeah, please notice that all the numbers here that result in a prime or in a, um, in a brown number, which I call a prime product, all these have as last cipher uh, a power of two. And there's more to say about this, but for the length of this video, I'll skip this. But this is very, very beautiful in my opinion. Anyway, let's look at the brown numbers. I call them the prime products. And the prime products are here in this table. And again, please notice that two and three are not considered primes here. So you will never ever find a multiple of two or three in this table. And the rhythm of the primes is actually the rhythm of the prime products is in all these numbers. Yeah, here again, you see the prime products and the rhythm of the primes is in here. That means the rhythm of the primes is the reverse of the primes, meaning the prime products. Now we get to the explanation of this rhythm. What you see here is the cipher zero in the center, and then we see six lines coming out of that origin. And on each line going clockwise, the next integer is placed. So it starts with one, then two, three, four, five, six, then it was one circle, and then the spiral continues with a seven on the first line, an eight on the second line, and so on. So these are the lines, and you can call the values, uh, y6, let me explain that first. y6, well, that's of course the perfect number six. The numbers in this direction, so 1, 7, 13, 19, 25, and so on, that's the direction I call 6n plus 1. And the other direction that is important is 6n plus 5. And we find the primes only in these two directions. But we not only find the primes there, but also the prime products. So here we see the line, the yellow line is the line of all the primes and prime products in the direction of 6n plus 1, while the green line, the green array, are all the numbers in the direction of 6n plus 5. Yeah, they're all the primes and the prime numbers there, prime products as well. So how do we find the rhythm? Well, the one we skip because the one is an extraordinary, extraordinary prime number, so it doesn't play a role here. The first prime we encounter is the five. Yeah, the five is not being excluded, so the five must be a prime. And therefore we find the square of the uh, prime five. And all the squares of all prime numbers are always in the yellow array. So now we go to look for the uh, the square of five in the yellow array, and that's where you find it. Here it is. So this is where the rhythm of the five starts, because the rhythm of the five appears every fifth time. So every fifth cipher, every fifth number in the yellow line is always a multiple of five. So we can exclude them all. They're all prime products. And the ordering of the green numbers in front are very important too because they are the same ordering as what we find here in this array. Yeah? So the ordering here repeats this ordering. And after we have found a five in the yellow line, a multiple of five means the square of five, we find five plus the next prime number always in the green array. So Seven times five is 35, so here it is, 35. And now we also find every fifth position here a multiple of five. So they're all excluded too, they're all prime products. So this is the rhythm of the prime products of five, every fifth time, and here too, every fifth time. Now we go to the next prime, which is seven. 
And again, as I said, the square of the, that prime must be in the yellow line. So where is the square of seven? It's here, seven times seven is 49. And now we can exclude every seventh position because every seventh position is a multiple of seven. And the ordering here is the same as in the yellow line. So seven, 13, 19, 25, 30, 31. These are the numbers here. So these are the yellow numbers. Now we go to the green line and now we will find that the numbers are the green numbers because the seven is in this array. So we take now seven times 11, yeah, the next prime, that's where it starts. And then every seven position is a multiple of seven, 11, 17, 23, 29, which is the ordering in this, in the green line. That's the rhythm and it completes and it repeats itself over and over and over again. Now, so the next one is 11. And where will we find 11? 11 square, of course, here. 11 square. And then every 11 time in this array, we find a multiple of 11. And the ordering is again here, 11, 17. Now the next one will be 23 and then 29 and so on. And now it jumps to the other side too, because 11 plus the next prime is a 13. Yeah, these all must be primes because the first non-prime, the first prime product is 25. That means all the others must be primes, which is true. So then we go to 11 times 13, which is 143. And that is the first one of the 11 in the right-hand side array. And now we can exclude every 11 time as well. Yeah, 13, and then we get 19. Because 13, 19, and the next will be 25. And then, of course, we go to 13. And 13 is, again, a yellow number. So we get 13 times 13, plus the next one will be 19 times 13. And on the other side, we will find 13 times 17. And then also here, every 13 times. I hope this is clear because this is the prime rhythm. And this is, to me, a very beautiful and very elegant rhythm because there is a rhythm every fifth time, every seventh time, every eleventh time, every thirteenth time. You can also put it in a table like this. Then we first put the table completely filled with ones, so with ons. And then we first go to the column of the first prime, which is a five. And then we find the five square in the array uh, at the left-hand side. And then we can put there a zero. Yeah, because this is a multiple of five. And then every fifth time we put another zero. And next we find the square of seven. We put a zero and every seven time a zero again. And then 11, a zero, every 11 time a zero. And then 13 square, a zero, and every 13 time a zero. Yeah, plus here, the five plus the next prime is 35. And then we go to here, seven plus the next prime is 11, 77. Then 11 plus the next time, 13, is 143, and so on. Yeah, and then every fifth, seven, 11, 13 times, another zero. And now we look for each, uh, each row. And we multiply all the values in the row. And here they're all ones, so they multiply to one. And if it is a one, then it is a prime. But here, there is at least one zero. So multiplying this row gives a zero, which means it is not a prime, which is a, uh, a prime product. So that's why it's excluded from the primes. That's how it works. We simply calculate by multiplying all the values in each row. And if it's a zero, it's not a prime. It is a, if it is a one, it is a prime. That's all. Some don't like this rhythm too much. They say, yeah, this is simply the sieve of Eratosthenes. No, that's not true. This sieve is a very simple, very basic algorithm, and it excludes all multiples. But this sieve doesn't tell us anything about the prime squares and all the other beautiful things that we can find in this rhythm. So if you only look with the left hemisphere, you don't see any uh, difference between this sieve and what I just showed you. But if you have your right hemisphere active as well, then you see there are many, many differences. And actually the prime rhythm is a very beautiful 
very intelligent rhythm. I thank you very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, then you could click on subscribe under this video. And every next time I upload a video, you get a message about this. You can also go to my website. I have a multilingual website, pateo.nl, with information in English, but also in Spanish, German, French, and other languages. And holyscience.org is an all English website. And you can also connect with me via other social media as well. For now, I thank you very much for watching this video.